Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, January 24th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I think it was last week when I talked about some of these atomic fragment issues with IPv6. Well, over the weekend, I had a little bit of time to look at some of this, and I posted some scapy scripts and fragments in order well to create ipv6 fragments and play a little bit with this so if you want to experiment if you want to explore what's going on with ipv6 fragmentation on your system feel free to use any of these scapy snippets and Apple today had one of its patch everything days, starting with Watch OS, which is now 3.1.3, TV OS, that's 10.1.1, iOS, that's 10.2.1, Mac OS, Sierra, and then for older versions of OS 10, we also have a new version of Safari. And yes, Windows users, you also got an update, and that's for iCloud. There isn't anything I think that sort of really sticks out here with uh, this uh, particular set of patches. Lots of WebKit vulnerabilities as usual that affect uh, multiple operating systems here. iOS, Safari, of course, and with that, Sierra. And of course, exploits against the watch always sort of uh, garner some interest. In this case, there are a couple of code execution flaws that could be triggered by playing audio files, for example on the watch. Certainly worthwhile to update this quickly and as usual with Apple you don't really get to pick which patches you would like to install so and so far there isn't really any strict priority here. But if you're looking for a vulnerability you should probably fix before you finish listening to this podcast. It is a remote code execution backdoor in the WebEx plugin for Google Chrome. This plugin comes from Cisco, the company behind WebEx, and the vulnerability was made public by Google's Serodey project. Essentially, what's happening here is that as you set up a WebEx meeting, the web server may send along a URL and WebEx will start any code that it finds at the URL. Now, the only protection that was sort of uh, built in here was that the URL has to include a relative complex uh, secret pattern. But of course, by reverse engineering the extension, it was pretty straightforward to then extract this pattern and it is now public. Google has made a proof of concept page available that does exploit the vulnerability. Again, at this point, it's only confirmed to work in Google Chrome. Now, there was an update that was released yesterday on Sunday, actually, version 103 of this particular extension for Chrome, but it still does not fix the vulnerability. Firefox also blocked the extension for now, so you cannot use Firefox to participate in meetings. At this point, I would really recommend that you disable the extension in Google Chrome, use another browser in order to use whatever WebEx sessions you have to participate in. Given that the exploit is relatively straightforward, we do have a proof of concept out. I would expect uh, sort of exploits out there in the wild, probably within hours. There is no word from Cisco yet as to when to expect a patch. I would hope they'll deliver it in the next couple of days. Google did make this public because they exceeded their 90-day wait period. And Symantec late last week released an update for its Norton Download Manager. It suffers from a DLL loading vulnerability. Now, this is a standard class of vulnerabilities, not terribly hard to execute, but I haven't really seen a lot of exploits taking advantage of DLL loading in the past. So update it and get it out of your way. 
And then for the Mac users here, we do have a new exploit for a vulnerability in the Microsoft Remote Desktop client for Mac OS X. That uh, vulnerability was patched in this month's Patch Tuesday, so just about uh, two weeks ago. Exploitation is actually not all that difficult. The attacker would have to set up an RDC server, configure it uh, maliciously with a special startup script, and then really just uh, send a link uh, to the victim that starts with RDP colon, which will then, of course, automatically start the client. And uh, with this vulnerability, it is possible to read and write files from the system, which could, for example, be used to overwrite a configuration file, SSH, access files, and the like in order to further exploit the victim. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.